lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. What's going on, my good people? This is Charles McCutcheon. I'm your favorite entrepreneur, and I want to thank y'all for coming out. For those, for those, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, best-selling author, have a nonprofit helping homeless veterans. I call myself Mr. Real Estate because I love helping people to get back into their houses and things of that nature. So what we're doing on this show, this is Charles's Corner, it's all about financial freedom. You know, we're supposed to be living in abundance, and so I bring on different bits and pieces. To to me, you put it into that mixing bowl and it equals financial freedom. I speak a lot on real estate, nonprofit, government contracts, business credit, getting funded on credit, writing books, and just the whole nine. Literally, I try to speak on what comes, you know, what I'm working on, because it's so much easier to talk about what I'm going through and what I'm, what I'm uh, working on myself. So instead of just trying to figure it out. <laughs> so today I didn't have, uh, I, I was just on a lot of different phone calls. I'm just kind of getting you all a snapshot of what I've been working on. So I was on a lot of different phone calls, talking to a lot of different people, uh, working some multifamily deals, working with some good folks out there, uh, and we have a group of about 9,000 people, and these groups are definitely, they're, they're looking to, to do bigger deals in the real estate world. So I can give you all some insight in that that I'm working on, and these groups of folks, they, they want to come together and do bigger deals. With that, you do have legal concerns and things like that. So I go over legal, the legal side of real estate, I go over, you know, breaking the deals down into real estate. I go over, to me, it's like everything all-inclusive with real estate. And then, uh, like this week coming up, I'm going to be speaking to a group of folks on uh, land deals. I'm going to talk private money. I'm going to talk working with lenders. And that's like, you know, everybody should, uh, everybody has to, if you're in the real estate industry, you have to work with some lenders at some point in time. So, I bring that information up so people can have a better understanding and, and how to move forward. We are in our third month family, and I will say, like I do say all the time, January 22nd was when a lot of people just quit. <laughs> to be mean, I'm just saying it because that's just statistically speaking, that's just the truth. So January 22nd, a lot of people quit. We got all excited in November. We got excited in December about how this new me, new year, and all that stuff was coming to play. And then what happened? You know, life took on its 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 toll and started running, and we kind of left everything behind. And what a lot of people are going to do? They're going to make some uh, they're going to make some excuses as to why they can't do it. <laughs> They're going to make some excuses as to why they can't do it. And and as I'm on the phone with y'all, I got people hitting me up, and it's no big deal. So people make excuses, and it's so much easier for us to say, hey, I didn't do it because of my child. I didn't do it because of my spouse. I didn't do it because of my job. We bring up every excuse in the book, and I'll tell it to you like this. This is the best I can tell you. If you bring up the excuses, you're going to have to live with it because, as I tell people all the time, we are, like right now, we're fighting to, to take care of four generations. Whether you want to believe it or not, you're fighting to take care of four generations. And, and those generations, they're looking to you to make it happen, family. You can't go back and say, well, I couldn't do it because they're not trying to hear that. Why do we always start out at the bottom? That's That's the crazy part. Like, we... We start at the, at the bottom like every time. Are y'all tired of that, though? Please tell me, you know, if y'all tired or, or what, or is it just me? Because I'm tired, and I know other people, they don't understand. They won't understand you when you when you start to really go for it. 
They're going to look at you like you're crazy when you want to do something different. But they will look at a Jay-Z and a Beyonce and all those folks and say, man, they're doing some great stuff, and they got four or five different companies that they invest in. But anytime we start investing in stuff like that, people look at us like we're crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you like this, y'all. Keep moving forward no matter what. I don't care what happens. We got we got a – and the way to do it, you have to connect with like-minded people. You've got to. You have to connect with like-minded people. That's the only way it works. So I tell you like this, as you're going through this journey and this thing called life, you will be knocked. You're going to be knocked down. It's not going to be fun. You're going to want to give up. (laughs) You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to cry. And that's just a part of the journey. You know, that's just, you you just got to be comfortable with it. I'll tell you what I did back when, and I I say it because I really want people to understand. And let me give you all an example of what I'm talking about. So I believe in my heart of hearts that everything revolves around, you know, the time that we have left here. You know, we're all been given the 24 hours. And so if you look at, like, people say, well, what's the temperature today? You know, everybody's looking at the temperature to figure out what you're going to wear. And then when you go to the doctor, they check your pulse, and they see how many beats per minute, you know, your heart rate is. And, and that's just, and you look at the clock and see, okay, what time I got to be, be at work. Everything revolves around time for us. And so if you take that into consideration and say, how do I maximize my 24? It, it, it is not about anybody else. You have to maximize the time you're given here. Whatever you choose to do, that, that's, that's on you. But you can't say that, you know, you don't have enough. And this is what I know. The way, they, the way they do time is this, and this is what I hear all the time. I hear people say, I don't have enough time because, you know, I got, I got to do this and this and this. And next thing you know, what they're doing is they're hanging out with their friends and, and relaxing and chilling. Or they're saying, man, I'm so bored. I have nothing to do. But we don't really look at the time that we have. So most people are going to work for eight hours. Most people are sleeping eight hours. So you only got three eight-hour periods in a day, y'all. So if you're going to work for eight hours, it may take you an hour, you know, back and forth. So that's nine hours gone. If you're sleeping for eight hours, so now you went down to seven hours. And during that seven hours, a lot of people, you know, we're, we're working with family, we're relaxing and things of that nature. But it's like, okay, you may have seven, you may have six hours to really get it in. So what are you doing with your time? And and let me give you all something else you can use. This is what I use to kind of look at my time and what I was doing with it. Today, what I did, my, I got with two mentors. These guys broke me down to help me to understand that what I was doing wasn't working. And I don't know what you're doing, but if you're figuring out something's not working, you have to find somebody that's been where you're going, and then you work with them. You latch on to them and, and so you can get there. That's the only way it's going to work. And it's called stinking thinking. So stinking thinking is you thinking that just by whatever you say in your mind, you're going to try to fix it yourself. It don't work that way, family. You know, everybody's out there praying. And this is what I, I truly believe. You know, we we some praying folks out there. But a lot of people would not put the work in. Faith without works is dead. We're going to pray until no end, but we won't put the work in. Like the work, and a man who doesn't work doesn't eat. Y'all, we have to put the work in, but if you keep saying you don't have enough time, but you have the same 24, but it's not you having enough time, it's not you not liking. I don't like Mondays. Mondays suck. No Mondays do not suck. The only thing that sucks is what you have to do on your Monday, and you can't blame anybody. Stop blaming people. Well, I'm here because, no, no, you're ex exactly where you're supposed to be. It was designed this way, family. It was designed this way. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Don't say you're supposed to be farther in life or you're supposed to. Nope. You're 100% where you're supposed to be, and everything is going to change when you change. When you change or you change the people around you, then that's when everything in your life is going to change. If that's what you're looking for. If you're happy where you are, 
by by all means, you know, stay where you are. I'm not mad at you. But my thing is, if you can't be happy, then there, you know, what else can you be? Like we should all be striving for that. And so what I did is I laid out a piece of paper. I laid out a piece of paper and it had time on it. It had Monday through Sunday at the top, and it had on the side. I started mine, I think, at 5.30 in the morning, and I did it in 30-minute increments, and I started writing down two weeks, y'all. And I'm going to tell you, when you can see what you're doing, that it should be an eye-opener. It should be like, oh, my goodness. I remember, like it was yesterday, on Wednesday, I would spend six hours watching TV. And I remember because it was March Madness, and I remember watching all those basketball games. I'm not making no money. And then I'm watching LeBron and them play as well, and they're making all this money, and I'm not making anything. <laughs> but I'm rooting for them because, you know, my team is this. My team better, you know, if some people go crazy over their team, their teams are making money, and you're not. And my mentor told me, you sitting there watching LeBron and rooting for him, he already had his million. Where's yours? So that just gave me a different start looking at life differently. I started wondering, like, okay, you know, what am I going to do? But I had mentors. Cause at first, I didn't really want mentors. I was like, I'm going to try it myself. That didn't lead me anywhere. I'm going to tell you that right now. So get some mentors, some people that have been there where you've been. So I'm looking at my list, and if you fill it in, you know, hopefully you don't cheat yourself. Monday through Sunday at the top, on the side, 5.30, 6.37. And then I looked and I saw all these different holes on, in my program. I'm sitting there watching TV. I'm sitting there hanging out. I'm sitting there doing things that wasn't going to get me to my end goal. And then I said, okay, I had to make a decision. So everybody's going to be there. you got to make a decision where you want to be. And if you're cool, Stay where you are. It's no big deal. But don't look at people on TV or people traveling and be like, man, man, they got it good. Man, oh, they so lucky. And I hear people, and I'm just like, you was not with me when I was shooting at 3 in the morning. When I was in the gym getting it in, when I was up late at night burning the midnight oil, you was not, not with me. And so I don't sugarcoat my lifestyle anymore. I don't do that. There's, there's no... And it says there's no playing small to make other people feel good. I'm not doing that. I'm going to tell you all, just like I know, there is nothing better than having freedom. I'm going to tell you all, like, that's the only thing I know. There's nothing better. So whenever you choose to get there, that's when you get there. But there's nothing better. And had I known what I know today, I would have worked twice as hard to get here. And I'm still working. Because I enjoy what I do because I'm going after my dreams. God gave me all this vision, and I'm going after everything. Everything he told me I can have, that's what I'm going after. And no person is going to stop me, and that's my mentality. And that's why people say, you work too much, Charles. I'm like, you don't even understand what he has given me. You know, you don't, you don't understand because he didn't give you my vision. That's where a lot of people get stuck. They let other people who, who determine their outcome. For what? God didn't give them your vision. You have your vision. Stick to it. Or you're going to, I look at it like this, you're going to let a lot of people down because people are watching you, whether it be your kids, your spouse, your, your, your friends. People are watching you to do what you said you was going to do. People, some people just watching you to fail. They will come from miles away, away just to see you on fire. If you set yourself on fire, people will travel for miles just to watch it. And I'm going to tell you like this, and it's not to say that, you know, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not a sugarcoating type of person. I'm just going to tell it to you the best way I can is to say that a lot of people don't have a lot in store for you. So I'm going to just be honest with you. They just don't. So, I mean, you can fall on hard times and, and nobody's probably coming to help you. You know, I don't I don't have that, that you know, people just coming to the rescue type people. I am my, you know, I, I, I do have to be the one to go get it, you know. And so I'm sure you all have a lot to where you have some people that say, well, if you need anything, let me know. But then when you need something, you let them know, and then they know where to be found. That's just part of life. That's all it is. 
And it's like you just have to choose better people. So let me give you all this. This is one way you can do it, and I call it computers and trees, right? So we got computers. So on the computer, you know, we got that Control-Alt-Delete button that we all use when we want to reset the computer, right? We have to do the same thing in life. Control the people that come into our life. <laughs> you, you have to alter. You got to look at your attitude and how you perceive people and how people perceive you. You can only control what you do. And then delete those people who no longer serve a purpose. And that's why they call it a season. Some people just in your life for a season. And you have to be okay with that. I love some people from a distance. A lot of us want to keep our foot on A and then try to get to Z without moving. It don't work that way, family. A lot of us want to keep those same people who are causing us the pain and the strife, and we want to stay right there. For what? You can love somebody from a distance. You don't have to talk to them every day, and I hate to say that, but I'm just telling you all, you know, just how I feel. And as I said, we're going to talk about computers, the control, delete, and the trees. So when you look at a tree, the way I look at it, all you need is a couple of good roots, (laughs) y'all. You don't need like 50,000 roots. You don't need all these. You need a couple of good roots to keep that tree. And so as you look at a tree, you got, the, you know, the tree arms out there and you got the leaves that are coming out from that, and then you have the brittle stuff at the end of the, at the, end of the tree that be falling off. Those are the same people who, this, who say, you, you know, they can count on you. can count on me. Those are the same people. They're at the end of the – they just keep falling off because they're too brittle. That's what they're going to do. They're going to fall away. Fall away. You need the roots, family. You need the roots. You don't really, you know, you can continue to grow if you got the roots. When trees get broken off, they, they grow they grow some more. That's the same thing with friends because they're seasonal. You're going to get some good people, and those are the people that you better stick behind and, and break your back for because they'll do the same for you. Those are the roots that y'all need to work with. So I don't have that many people, but I got some people that are roots, though, that go to the ends of the earth with you and then, and, and then run with you. So for me, it's about who do you have in your life right now? You know, we are praying, as I said, but a lot of people don't want to move just because they pray. And this is the one thing I see a lot of. I see a lot of people will pray for this thing, whatever that thing is, and then he's going to bring it to you. You get it, and then you pray again. (laughs) I'm not testing nobody's faith. I'm just telling you all what I see. I see people pray for something, and he brings it to you, but it may not look the way you think it should look, and that's okay. So it may not look the way you think it should look, and then you've got a question. Like, hold on, but you already prayed for it, and now you're praying again. I'm going to leave that one alone. Y'all do what y'all have to do. I'm just telling y'all what I see and what I hear and what I know. That's it. That's all I can give you. So as we go along this journey, we're about to close this quarter out, y'all. It's only four quarters. It's only four quarters. And some people, and, and hold on, let me let me caveat this and say, let me say this right quick. So, you know, we got some new people on the line. <laughs> I am not sugarcoating anything for anybody. If this is too much for you, I'm going to say, hey, I'm sorry you got on. This is probably, you know, this probably wasn't for you. I don't speak for everybody, but I will give you the real story behind everything. And I don't think we need to sugarcoat because it doesn't give you the true story. And and that's all I'm going to say about that. And so as we go along this journey, I do it in quarters. This is the first quarter. January, February, March. March is almost over, family. And then I look at it to where people get in. I just had a guy get in touch with me. He got in touch with me back in 2017 and asked me some stuff. And then he got in touch with me three days ago and asked me the same exact said, hey, man, you know you asked me that back in 2017. What happened back then? You know, it is what it is. But if I give you the information and you don't do nothing with it, to me, it's almost like you're trying to waste my time. But, you know, to each his own. All I'm saying is the things that we have that we know we should be doing, a lot of people are not doing. This is that get on up and put my foot in your behind type of talk, y'all, because I see what's happening. People still working off of the 2015 list. In 2020, you can't keep putting it on to next year and then the next year and then the next year 
Come on, y'all. You got to get something off that list done. You know, come on now. We can't keep putting it on and keep going to the next list. And then now 2021 is my year. Now this is really my year. I get that so much by so many people. It's like a broken record. I just listen, though. I just listen. And people say, I work too hard. I'm like, you have no idea. You have no idea the reason I do what I do. You have no idea. We all have been given something that is spectacular. We all have a skill set. We all have something that we can just go out there. Some people are waiting on you. God gave you all this to use, and you're not using it. What does that make you, though? What does that make you? Because he gave you, he gave you all this stuff to use, and you haven't even tapped in probably the 10% of it. So you're allowing yourself to play small. For some reason, I don't know why, I think a lot of us are scared, and a sad place to be is you're scared of success and you're scared of failure. So you're just right there in the middle. And you don't really know what to do. You got to do something, family, because by doing nothing, you've done something. <laughs> you have to make a decision. And I remember back in the day when I met these young guys, 21 and 22 years old, that it was, I met them back in 2011 down in Florida. We was in uh, Jacksonville. These guys had made $2.3 million. And I looked at them and I said, ain't this about something, something. They didn't make $2.3 million. I'm sitting here doing single-family homes and got some rentals, and they be out here killing me. And I was just saying to myself, something has to change. I got to get on my job. I, gotta, I have to use the gifts that he gave me, and I just wasn't doing it. I was playing small. Today, when I met them guys, I said, okay. I said, it's done. I'm, I'm finished. I'm done playing small. And that's all I told myself. And I said, I got to get these books. I got to start studying. I got to start being around better people. I have to, you know, I got to increase what I'm doing because he already laid it out there for me. I just haven't used it yet. And I get some of these people who say they're waiting on God. I said, no, you're not. He already, what they say, he he rested on the seventh day for a reason, right? (laughs) He only rested because he was done, right? (laughs) So how are you waiting on him if he's already resting because he's done? That means he did everything. So there's nothing left to do. He's all he's just waiting on you to do your part. Because if you don't get up, huh, I'm not here to preach to y'all. I'm just telling y'all what I know. That's all. I'm not here to preach. I'm just telling you what I know. Because if you don't get up, y'all, nothing's going to happen. Somebody is relying on you. Start thinking about that. Like, who is relying on me to get it right? Like, somebody is counting on you right now. Who is that? Who's counting on you to make it happen by any means necessary? Do you have somebody that's counting on you? Because I guarantee you, everybody got at least one person that's counting on them. I need you to get this because when you get it, I'm going to push my I believe button. It may be your children. It may be your spouse. It may be your significant other. it, It may be somebody that's counting on you to get it done so they can, in a sense, okay, now I believe. Now, I believe I can do it. So for, for me to tell y'all, you know, to play small or to not do something or to, or to do it scared, please do it scared if you have to. The way I want to sum this up is first you need to look at where your time is going, family, because if you're sitting there wasting time, nothing's going to come of it. And if it's not written down somewhere to where you can see where your time is going, nothing's going to come of it. All right, you're just going to continue to waste time. Just to be honest, find you a mentor or two or three or five, I don't know. Find somebody that's doing what you're doing. But they're doing it at such a level that they're revered as the expert. It's almost like some of y'all would rather blindfold yourself and run across the street and hope that you get over there. That's what we're doing. Well, let me just blindfold myself and let me see what happens. Or... You can get the GPS from somebody who's already traveled that road, and then they give it to you. Sometimes you got to pay for it. And I'm one of those guys, I'll pay for it. I have mentors. I got four mentors in real estate. I got two in, in the nonprofit world. I got two in the government contracting world. I got two in the private money world. I got three in the speaking 
world. I got two in the writing book world. I got, and that's just what I have, but I provide value to those guys. I provide value. I'm just not saying, give me, give me, give me. I'm providing value. And I had to pay, I, you know, pay some of them, don't pay some of them. It is what it is. But when you can provide value, then it's more likely to open the doors up for you. And people will want to work with you. If you have a bad attitude, people are not going to want to work with you. If it's all about you, people are not going to work with you. If you always come, people are not going to work with you. It's not going to happen. I don't care how many degrees you have. It's not about degrees, family. It's not about degrees. It's not about your education level. It's your skill set and being able to work with people and just being a good person. That's it. That's it. Being a good person will open more doors for you than your degrees. I'm not saying don't go get them. I got the degrees as well, but I don't use, I mean, I'm not really out here saying, okay, you need a degree to do real estate, a degree to do a nonprofit. You don't need that. You do need some sense about yourself to whether you can connect with like-minded people and move forward, move your stuff forward. I had to put this off, y'all. I had to get this off my chest because I see a lot of people just kind of getting by. A lot of people just kind of getting by, and I think we have too much at stake right now, and, it, and it's always been too much at stake, but it's like we, we got we to gotta see what we have our hands on, look at the gift that you've been given, and do something about it, or not. You know, either, either way, that's on you. Do something about it or not, but don't keep looking at these people on TV or and wishing that you were in their place. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to be in a place? Are you going to get up? Do you have somebody counting on you? Who's watching you right now, watching you complain, listening to you complain? You know, that's how I look at it. So this is what I want to do. This is the Elation Radio, and I do want to thank Ms. Kimmy Robinson for putting a, together Elation Magazine many, many moons ago, and I watched it evolve in the Elation Radio, and it just keeps evolving in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, where we have a proclamation for elation honors, and we do something every November. Around the 16th of the month, the city comes on board, and we are just we just have so much fun there. It's a whole weekend type of affair. <clears throat> Great people coming out, educating people. We got the word of God that's being shared as well. And for everybody out there, my name is Charles McCutch. You can find me all over social media. You can hit me at charlesmspeaks at yahoo.com. And, I mean, it may be a minute before I get to you, but I'm going to get to you. I'm human. You know, I'm human. I'm a busy guy, but I don't make any excuses. I just get it done. That's all we can do. So what I'm going to do is pray us out right there. Now, dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you right now to bless everyone who's going through the trying time. I pray for everybody's strength, everybody's unity, and everybody's empowerment. I know people feel that everything is not coming together fast enough and frustration sets in and people tend to believe it won't get any better. Dear Father, let them know that everything happens in your time, and I know you'll provide the things that we need and know that when our time comes, it will be right on time. Father God, you're all-knowing, and we must believe and trust in you. We do get weak, but we must continue to keep the faith in trying times. Father God, ensure that we manifest the destiny and the glory you've already set in our lives. Ensure that we use up the territory you've given us, dear Lord. I pray for everybody to gain more strength, I pray for everybody to gain more wisdom so that we know without a doubt that joy will come in the morning. In your name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. And this is Charles McCutcheon. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. Y'all take it easy.